yo um what what exactly is going on with avengers doomsday and secret wars the internet has been pretty divided over the announcement of robert downey jr coming back not as tony stark but as dr doom where the russo brothers specifically stated at san diego comic-con he'll be playing victor von doom one of the concerns i had before all of this happened was whether due to the jonathan majors controversy a shift from kang the conqueror to dr doom as the main threat would make doom's introduction feel too sudden rushed or out of nowhere since there would be no prior setup for for his character. There don't seem to be many seeds planted in the projects leading up to Avengers 5. People have made the argument that Thanos himself wasn't really set up immensely prior to Infinity War, where his few appearances were limited to less than a minute worth of screen time in the first Avengers post credit scene, his short appearance in Guardians of the Galaxy, and the end credit scene in Avengers Age of Ultron. Infinity War pretty much set the foundation for his motivations and him actually encountering the main heroes. I mean, that's fair, but it is a little funny seeing so much set up for one villain just for them to scrap said villain in favor of another. Whether you like the shift to Doom or RDJ coming back or not, shifting away from the Kang plot was probably the best course of action financially speaking, because beforehand, Avengers 5 was titled The Kang Dynasty, where you could assume the heroes of Earth-616 fight against the dynasty of Kang seen at the post credit scene of Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania. This is a prime example of what happens when you announce projects too early. They really thought they could pump out The Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars in 2025. I know the VF FX workers would have been built like this before they could see their families again. Marvel Studios changing course isn't surprising because assuming both Avengers Doomsday and an alternate universe where it still remained the Kang Dynasty and both versions are of the same level of quality, which movie do you think is going to get more butts in seats? A movie centered on a villain whose setup was limited to a Disney Plus show and a flop of a movie where he gets bested by ants? Or the movie where they bring back a beloved actor as the main villain? The idea might not be a good thing, but it's guaranteed to get people more interested and make Make more revenue in the box office, even if the movie ends up not being that great. What's that? You're fading out. Oh, we, we broke it too many records. We can't hear you through all of this box office money. <laughs> <laughs> Which seems to be the case as RDJ's announcement is one of the most viewed videos on Instagram. Marvel really fumbled the bag with Kang. Ant Man the Wasp Quantumania unironically ended up being one of the most useless and insignificant entries in the entire multiverse saga. Its whole purpose was to set up Kang or the Council of Kangs, who aren't even the main threat anymore. I remember them trying to hype this movie like, yeah, this will lead directly into the next Avengers movie. The only thing that prevents the movie from being like a 2 out of 10 in my eyes is Jonathan Major's performance as Kang the Conqueror. If he wasn't the villain, I don't know if I could have sat through that movie. Kevin Feige and company got a little too excited with Kang thinking he was gonna pop off. Shot yourselves in the foot with establishing the fact that every Kang variant across the multiverse is played by Jonathan Majors. I don't know why they did that. If the plans for the Avengers films weren't announced so soon, soon, all of this restructuring could have been done behind the scenes. But now nah, we got to witness the sheer panic from Marvel Studios, resulting in them bringing back RDJ to generate hype, shifting from the Kang Dynasty to Doomsday. <laughs> But hey, it is what it is and all we can do is hope everything works out for the best. Because if this Hail Mary from Marvel doesn't work, it's over buddy, wrap it up. There have been some fun discussions going around on how they'll tie the overall plot of the multiverse saga to Doom and how certain projects will connect. And that's what I want to yap about, what I think could happen to get to the end goal. So far, the only confirmed characters that we know will appear in Avengers Doomsday include Doctor Doom, Doctor Strange, the Thunderbolts, and the Fantastic Four. Other characters we can guess will no doubt play a role in the Avengers Avengers movies like Sam Wilson's Captain America. Captain America Brave New World I don't think will tie in heavily to the multiverse, but I wouldn't be surprised if at the end or in a post credit scene they try to plant the seeds for a new Avengers team. Right now in the current state of the MCU, there really is no Avengers roster. Nobody has gone out of their way to be like, hey, we should probably set up another Avengers team in the event of another grand threat trying to take over Earth or something. If you want the Avengers together to fight Doom, then you obviously need a team of Avengers to begin with. Sam Wilson being the vocal point to lead the team wouldn't be all that surprising. I'm not sure exactly what the Thunderbolts are going to do against Doctor Doom. I guess their presence will be more of an all hands on deck kind of thing once the Avengers realize there is a threat coming. Maybe they'll help fight Doom bots or something, I don't know. Although if they still have Sentry and he's a powerhouse in the Thunderbolts movie, he could be a valuable asset. I'd imagine the Fantastic Four will play a major role in the Avengers films, considering them and Doctor Doom are the focal point of the Secret Wars comic event from 2015. It brings up interesting conversation on what 
Earth RDJ's Doom comes from, whether he comes from the Fantastic Four universe or just another random reality. Having Doom show up at the very end of the Fantastic Four first steps movie could be the needed setup for Doomsday, since there has been no mention of Doctor Doom or Latveria thus far. The movie will take place outside of Earth 616 or the main MCU timeline where the Fantastic Four is set in the 1960s in a retro futuristic reality. Galactus and the Silver Surfer are set to appear, with Galactus being the main villain. So it's very likely Galactus might actually win and ends up destroying the Earth the Fantastic Four come from. The end of that movie could have the team find a way to travel to the main MCU Earth or somewhere else in the multiverse because how else would they show up in the Avengers movies? If Doctor Doom comes from the same Earth and follows the Fantastic Four, maybe that's how he'll come into contact with the other heroes. Huge emphasis on maybe, as I'm not entirely sure if Doctor Doom will even be mentioned or exist in the Fantastic Four universe. There have been rumors about how Doom and Reed Richards' relationship will be portrayed or whether there will be any relationship at all. Some rumors suggest that Doctor Doom and Reed Richards' relationship won't be as important or impactful as it is in the comics. It'll be very similar to Tony and Thanos, where Tony knew there was a threat coming but didn't know exactly who it was. Basically, Thanos is Doom and Tony is Reed. <laughs> If this has any truth to it, I'm not gonna lie, that is very disheartening to hear. This is exactly what I was afraid would happen. Removing any connection between Doom and Reed gets rid of the entire main focus of the Secret Wars event from the comics they are probably taking the most inspiration from. Doctor Doom's history is so heavily tied to Reed Richards and the Fantastic Four. Removing that relationship is like removing any connection or history between Professor X and Magneto. Doom has had a grand hatred for Reed Richards ever since they were university students together. For crying out loud, for people who aren't familiar with the character, there is an entire YouTube channel dedicated to Doom just venting on his hatred for Reed Richards in the Fantastic Four. Now, if it were me getting disrespected like this, getting hated on with that many views, I wouldn't let that slide, but that's just me though. Me personally, I wouldn't take this level of disrespect. Ain't no way the movie fun to focus more on Peter Parker's reaction to seeing Doom than freaking Reed Richards. But who knows, hopefully this is just some bogus rumor from a fraudulent scooper because that is a major disservice to both characters. On the topic of the multiverse, the reason why the MCU seems to be taking more inspiration from the 2015 Secret Wars event written by Jonathan Hickman and not the original one from the 1980s is because of the implementation of incursions. Incursions are basically when two universes in the multiverse start colliding with one another which results in the destruction of one or both universes. This would have a ripple effect on every other Earth, and if not prevented, would cause the destruction of every universe. This was first explained by Reed Richards when him, Black Panther, Captain America, Iron Man, Doctor Strange, Black Bolt, and Namor all met up to discuss said threat. This same concept has already been established in the MCU, specifically in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, where Reed Richards of Earth 838, who was a member of the Illuminati, explains to the main 616 Strange how their Stephen Strange caused an incursion. Your arrival here confuses and destabilizes reality. The larger the footprint you leave behind, the greater the risk of an incursion. Incursion? An incursion occurs when the boundary between two universes erodes, destroying one or both entirely. You also had Clea appear in an end credit scene of the same movie confronting Doctor Strange about how his dream walking caused another incursion. And she's like, yeah, all right, buddy, we gotta fix this mess. You caused an incursion and we're gonna fix it. Unless you're afraid. Not in the least. Doctor Strange 3 could potentially be the perfect prelude to Avengers Doomsday, showcasing the current instability of the multiverse and how everything is nearing the end. Not to mention Benedict Cumberbatch is confirmed to pop up in the Avengers movie. There's an untitled Marvel film slated for February 2026, just a few months before the release of Doomsday, so that could be the release for a hypothetical Doctor Strange 3, but who knows. The fifth Avengers movie has to lay a lot of groundwork going in. Where does Doom come from, his motivations, how he comes the contact with Earth 616, possibly killing Kang the Conqueror and the Kang Dynasty at the very beginning. It'd be kind of weird if they just never address Kang at all or why he's no longer perceived as a threat. A quick scene or two wouldn't be anything too crazy. The way I see it, Doomsday will no doubt be very similar to Infinity War where it's part one of a much larger story that ends on a cliffhanger or the heroes losing. To ultimately lead to Secret Wars, Doom must possess a higher level of power, either from Kang or another being, to create Battleworld under his control. In the Secret Wars comic event, 
Pretty much every universe in the multiverse had been destroyed except for two, the main Earth 616 and the ultimate universe or Earth 1610. But an incursion was happening between the two universes. Both universes ended up colliding, resulting in their destruction in the process, leaving no universe remaining in the multiverse. While this is happening, Doctor Doom teams up with the Molecule Man on a mission to seek out the Beyonders and kill them. The Beyonders were this group of powerful, omnipotent, godlike beings who exist outside of the multiverse. The Beyonders created the Molecule Man to be placed in every universe across the multiverse. The Molecule Man was constructed as a singular being across all of space and time, a single consciousness shared throughout all of his infinite selves. He served as pretty much a ticking time bomb for any particular universe. If a version of the Molecule Man dies, then that entire universe dies along with him. The Beyonder's grand experiment was to see what would happen if all the Molecule Men across the multiverse were to die at once, causing the simultaneous death of everything in the multiverse. So Molecule Man was wanted Doctor Doom to travel across the multiverse and kill the different versions of the Molecule Man to prevent the Beyonder's grand plan from happening. However, this is what was causing incursions in the first place, since the death of a Molecule Man means the death of that universe. While I'm sure the MCU won't use Owen Reese as the Molecule Man, Deadpool and Wolverine introduced the idea of an anchor being, an individual from every universe who is so significant if they die, then the universe dies with them. Only differences being that the supposed anchor being isn't the same person from every universe, and their death doesn't cause the instantaneous destruction of their universe. It's a slow process that can take up to thousands of years. An anchor being is an entity of such vital importance that when they die, a whole world slowly withers out of existence. Your anchor being died in an act of self-sacrifice so epic that it sent shivers down the timeline. The Wolverine. You don't be this is what it feels like. How long have we got? In most cases, a couple of thousand years. Most cases aren't fast enough. Not for me. Doom goes out of his way to confront the Beyonders and uses a device that contains a bunch of different Molecule Men from the multiverse as a bomb to detonate in front of the Beyonders, killing the Beyonders in the process. After destroying the Beyonders, Doctor Doom took their power and used it to salvage the remains of all the destroyed universes in the multiverse and merged them all into one called Battleworld, where he rules with an iron fist. So I would imagine Avengers Doomsday ends with Doom being powerful enough to create Battleworld and Secret Wars deals with the ramifications of that, focusing on whoever the remaining heroes are after the destruction of several universes or every universe to which Battleworld is all that remains. Some rumors have speculated that not only would Doomsday show the formation of Battleworld, but that every MCU project released between the two Avengers movies that isn't a prequel will take place on Battleworld. A project that would fall into that category would be Spider-Man 4. All Spider-Man fans wanted for MCU Peter Parker after No Way Home is to see him in a more street level setting, especially after his last adventure involved interacting with multiple multiverse variants of himself and other villains. No Avengers level team ups, no cosmic threat, just him being your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. You could have had the perfect opportunity for him to team up with Daredevil to take down the Kingpin as the mayor of New York, but no. Sony insisted on Spider-Man 4 being another multiverse story, and now it seems as if they want both Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield to come back, while also having Noel, the god of the symbiotes, be the primary villain of the movie. <laughs> Venom The Last Dance is supposed to lay the foundation setting up Null. He's not going to be the main villain, nor will he appear for a long period of time in Venom 3, but they're clearly setting up something bigger. What frustrates me most about this is how they literally could have saved the three Spider-Men reunion for Secret Wars considering that's already a giant multiversal crossover event. Chances are Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield will show up both for Spider-Man 4 and Secret Wars if any of these rumors are true, which further dilutes the speciality of having them interact in the first place. I feel like a street level Spider-Man story would have been a nice palate cleanser after all the stuff Peter's gone through. and some Something more grounded could have been refreshing before jumping into another grand event like this, but I guess we can't have nice things. Venom 3 would be the final installment of the Venom films, so it's not like they're gonna have Null be the main villain for a Venom 4 or a Sinister 6 movie. Since the Sony Venom universe is connected with the MCU multiverse, I guess the formation of Battleworld or whatever happens in Avengers Doomsday would allow some of those characters to cross over with MCU Spidey. Avengers Secret Wars will serve as the conclusion to the multiverse saga and all the 
cameo memes you've seen for Marvel movies is pretty much what a lot of Secret Wars will probably be. Imagine Spider-Man No Way Home, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, and Deadpool and Wolverine on steroids. I truly see no limits to the characters they might want to include in this movie. You ever see those meme leaks of Marvel cameos for the Avengers movies? Talking about some soups, I need you to distract Kang. Shoot, at this point, I wouldn't even be surprised if soups did show up in Secret Wars. You want to see Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man interact with Hugh Jackman's Wolverine? Well, here's your chance. It's gonna be a long-time Marvel fan's wet dream. Gonna have long-time audiences like. <laughs> That's probably why they're adapting the Secret War storyline so soon, to ensure that the different actors from various Marvel movies over the years don't get too old. If it ends up being that the main heroes of 616 lose at the end of Doomsday, they'll need to find a way to gather all the remaining heroes from the multiverse to band together and stop Doom. Now to clarify, any intrigue I have for this movie does not solely depend on cameos or who I want to see pop up. It's actually one of the few concerns I have for Secret Wars. I hope they can tell a good story and not solely rely on cameo porn just to keep the audience invested. I hope this is the last time we're exposed to stories bringing back beloved Marvel actors from previous eras like the Spider-Men or the Fox X-Men characters. Let this be the swan song to the old era of Marvel and move on to focus on a new iteration of the X-Men and Fantastic Four. After Molecule Man transfers the power of the Beyonders to Reed Richards at the very end of the Secret Wars comic, Reed restores Earth-616 which had a few slight changes to the timeline. The biggest example of this is Miles Morales from the now destroyed Ultimate Universe being integrated into the main Earth 616 timeline, making it seem as if he'd been there this whole time. I think the supposed MCU soft reboot will serve the same purpose for the X-Men and Fantastic Four. The aftermath of Secret Wars will likely have the Fantastic Four integrated into the main timeline, making it seem as if the X-Men and mutant characters have been here this whole time in the timeline. Because again, the Fantastic Four movie takes place on a separate Earth. It also opens the door for any recasts they might want to do for Marvel heroes like T'Challa, Wolverine, or essentially the entire X-Men cast. A lot of what will happen in Secret Wars hasn't been officially confirmed by Marvel or anything like that. This is just the general outline of what I personally think might happen in the two Avengers movies and how the multiverse saga will conclude, with various modifications here and there. Regardless of what direction they go in when using the Fantastic Four, Doctor Doom, or any multiverse character, Marvel cannot fumble the bag with this. Way too many people are starting to lose interest in the MCU with the overabundance of media mediocre projects left and right post endgame. But that's the thing though, the decline in the MCU intrigue does not represent superhero fatigue. I always stand by the fact that superhero fatigue never has and probably won't for a while ever exist. If people aren't interested in an upcoming superhero movie or a movie bombs in the box office with poor reviews, that's not representative of people getting tired of superheroes. What people are tired of is the same old mediocre or just downright bad projects. You can't use the failures of films that aren't that great to prove the disinterest of superhero content like The Marvels, Black Adam, or Joker 2 for example. If superhero fatigue exists across the board, then all of these movies would flop regardless of their quality. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 did really well, so did Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, Spider-Man No Way Home, Deadpool and Wolverine, The Batman, Wakanda Forever. If a superhero movie offers something new and exciting and it's just an overall well-made product, people will pull up. This has been proven time and time again. If Marvel can just stick to actual good writing and focus on their heavy hitters for the foreseeable future, then they'll do just fine. Whether you like it or not, superhero content is here to stay.